This video is sponsored by Raycon. Over the past few years, I've been gathering quite the collection of what I presume to be awful animated movies. I mean, just take a look for yourself. Who wants to watch Zuzu Pets, The Quest for Zoo? Ew, why is the cover sticky? Now, most of these films have come from the Goodwill or thrift stores. Stuff that most people don't want and just throw away. But that's where I come in. I proudly introduce to you all my new series for this channel, Bargain Binge. A show where I randomly pick a film from my bad movie shelf and review it. Yes, folks, this is a completely original idea that's never been done before. <coughs> and for our premiere episode, we are going to check out... Oh, God. A ripoff? Oh, already? <sighs> Fine. We're gonna watch Golden Entertainment's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Damn it, this was a bad idea. Why did I do this? It's a stupid series. Why did I should review more furry characters? That always works. My channel calls me a furry, but they like the furry stuff. It's not my fault. All right, so who's behind this movie? Unfortunately for us, the origin of this movie is short. So let's just rip this band-aid off and get it over with. The studio responsible for this film is Golden Entertainment 2. Okay, uh, also known as Golden Films. Founded in 1988 by Diane Eskenazi. Wait, hold on a second. That name sounds familiar. The writers for this movie are Cindy McKay and Diana Eskenazi. Oof. Oh my God. No. So from what I could gather, Diane was a driving force behind the studio and pushed hard when it came to ripping off other popular movies. Disney, Don Bluth films, just everything. It even got so bad that Disney actually sued them. And get this. They lost. The court ruled that both parties were using sources that were from the same pool of public domain stuff, as in fairy tales, The Hunchback, Beauty and the Beast. These were all public domain, so no harm, no foul. Still scummy as hell, though. It's all quite sad, really. Ah, yes. Check out this filmography. The, the Legend of Atlantis. Yoink. Tarzan of the Apes. Yoink. A Tale of Egypt. <laughs> All original stories that were totally not made up because other popular studios were making their own films about each respective topic. Not one bit. What are you talking about? Total coincidence. Uh, they, they weren't ripping off other popular studios. I have no idea what you're saying. For over 16 years, Diane squeezed everything she could out of these ripoffs, but the studio came to an end in 2004. Good riddance. Go to your corner with Dingo Pictures. Yee. So what's the movie about? Oh, what's that? <laughs> you, you want a story that makes sense? A beginning that establishes the characters and the narrative? Well, too bad. You're not getting that. Enjoy this abrupt musical number instead. Welcome to Paris, to Paris in spring. The people prepare us to love and to sing. Oh, yeah. that Guys, it's obvious. Disney's Hunchback has nothing on this one. This movie is a fever dream of edits. Day, night, day, night, day, night. And the same animation used over and over and over. Who are these characters? Where are we? When are we? Help me to recollect. Once more, this movie just inexplicably throws everything at you. You're already confused with what's going on. Oh, uh, maybe we're in the 15th century. I mean, that's when the book takes place. 
But then some random kid wearing modern day clothes just runs across the screen and disappears. Everyone. What? Who was that? Why was he wearing? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna lose it, guys. If I keep asking logical questions, I am going to lose it. Okay, so let's try and get back on track. There's Quasimodo and his bat sidekicks. And oh, never mind. I guess we're done with this scene. We don't even get to see our main character. We, we, we barely see any of him throughout the first half of the movie. We barely see him in any of the movie. Uh, I will get to that in a moment. Oh, by the way, enjoy the bat sidekicks. I guess they're the replacements for the gargoyles. I don't know. But they're like, <laughs> they sound like jazz guys. I, I legitimately do not know what's going on here. This series was a bad idea. Why did I think I should pick random bad movies from thrift stores thinking that this would be a good idea? I should stop the video right now. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye. <laughs> Fine, I'll see this through. So now we meet the villain of the film, not Gaston. Trademarked. That is definitely against the law. I don't get this guy. He's like, looks like he's got the mustache of Captain Hook. He's got the chiseled body of Gaston. Is he supposed to be Frollo? Who, who are you, bro? We're in France, I believe, but he sounds like he's Spanish. His name's Jean-Claude, and yet they're playing Carmen, which I'm pretty sure is a Spanish musical in the background. I have no idea. Guys, I have no idea what's going on. There are so many mixed messages and different types of tone in this movie. It, I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. I just want to leave. I just want to stop recording right now, guys. I just want to leave right now and go go watch something that's good. If our citizens do not work, they will not pay us taxes. Oh, that chicken really flies. <laughs> well, Jean-Claude here is the law around this town. And he forbids anything that breaks the law. And that includes magic. He and his sidekicks go into town and confront Melody who I guess is supposed to be Esmeralda? I don't know. Guys, just so you know, uh, this movie came out before Disney's, so they don't have the luxury of watching Disney's film and ripping off certain points. Maybe they had the poster or the trailer, and that's where they got their inspiration or lack thereof. The only similarities between the Disney film and this one is Quasimodo and the Towers of Notre Dame. That's it. That is it. No Esmeralda, no Frollo, no Gargoyles. It's just Quasi. And even then, they got that wrong. I'll explain here in a bit. So Jean-Claude Van Damme goes into town, tells, Esmer <clears throat> tells Melody, yo, you can't be doing magic. That's against the law. Anything that breaks the law is against the law. His words, not mine. And then we discover that Melody here has magical talking instruments. Do we get an explanation? No. No, we do not. All we're told really is that Melody is magical. We don't know how, why, when, where, what. We don't know. We don't, we don't know. This movie doesn't tell us anything. But I do know this. These talking instruments are so incredibly annoying. There are way too many of them. There's like an accordion, a tambourine, a cello, the cello stick. I know music. Uh, these, these little clampers, I guess is what they're called. I don't know. They look like beheaded bird heads. It's just, guys, there's, there, there are way too many side characters and there's way too much of a lack of explanation of why they even exist. They're just there. Oh, I love a little bratwurst with a little sauerkraut and a nice strudel for dessert. Mm, mm, I love strudel. And here's the worst part. These side characters talk more in the movie than the main characters. That is not an exaggeration. That is a fact. When you, you barely see Quasi, Melody barely talks, Jean-Claude Van Damme talks a little bit, but these side characters talk more than anybody else. 
which kind of, you know, defeats the purpose of calling them side characters. At this point, they're basically the main characters. Ugh, God, I hate this movie. Yeah, come and hang out with us. Get it? Hang? That was funny. Boy, this is from nowhere. This is ridiculous. Folks, hold on. We're about to go into maximum overdrive. I gotta get my strength for this one. So Quasi randomly shows up, tells the villain, named Jean-Claude, to back off. Jean chases the villagers around. Melody runs to the church, shouting out, Sanctuary! My sanctuary! Jean then kidnaps Melody's mom, I guess? We, we aren't even told that, really. Uh, then we're told that Jean-Claude and Quasi are half-brothers, okay? Uh, this all happens, by the way, within 10 minutes of the film. Again, this film's pacing goes super slow and then just immediately hits you with, like, major things out of nowhere all at once. What the hell? Yes. No. Yes. No. Indeed. Melody then meets Quasi, who, let's be real here, doesn't really look that bad when it comes to being a hunchback. I actually watched this movie with a bunch of friends, and one of my friends, Sarah, she said, you know, he doesn't really seem like he has any kind of uh, deformity here. He looks like he's got bad posture, and that's it. You don't know how right you are. So Melody and Quasi literally fall in love right on the spot, and then we immediately get a love song, which oddly enough, sounds a lot like a Christmas song. Listen for yourself. Tell me I'm wrong. Bells all ring whenever you're around. They ding dong ding. What a wonderful thing. It's my favorite sound. Melody then sees her mom's donkey, deducts that her mother was kidnapped, somehow finds out where her mother is. Her mother is dancing with a bunch of barn animals, though she could possibly be doing more with the barn animals from the sounds coming from her body. Oh, oh enough. I'm worn out. Oh. But oh my god, it was a trap. Jean-Claude Van Damme shows up. He takes Melody. He says, guess what? You're getting executed. And Melody's like, well, that's a bummer. She doesn't even fight back. She's kind of like, what, what can you do? I I'm going to be executed. What can you do? Even the mom's the same way. It's like, well, we had a good run. <laughs> They're so lethargic at the notion that the daughter's being put to death. It's like, oh, well, these things happen. Take care of one another. So Melody is taken to prison. She's thrown into jail. She's up, oh, shut the fuck up right now. It is song time. Yes, song time. When I'm in jail, in death row, you know what I want to do? I want to sing. I want to bring things to life. I want to uncover a secret cat that's been hiding in my room and sing a song. I really should not have had alcohol before recording this video. That was a bad idea. All right, song time. From your tower, you can find the power to create a world of art. And here we are, folks. Climax of the movie. You ready? So, it turns out that Jean here has a case of the big dumb because he decides that he will not execute Melody until the bells ring from Notre Dame. <laughs> okay? Uh, the instruments then run up the staircase, tell Quasi, don't ring the bells, and then Quasi runs to the rescue and saves Melody from Jean. And then, folks, and then, oh, oh, I can't even stress this enough. Ugh, I'm going to go crazy here. One of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in a movie ever happens on the spot. Quasi, who is established as being a hunchback, people even call him that, he's covering his face. And then Melody is like, what's wrong? And then, inexplicably, Quasi is normal. Are you all right? Oh, you look so handsome. You have beautiful eyes. What? He's handsome? 
He looks completely different. His hunchback is gone. What? No, legitimately, there's no explanation. It just happens. There's no reason why this happened. And it is so hypocritical. Because Melody's like, I like you anyway, even if you think you're not handsome. Oh, well, that's really difficult when the guy's actually handsome now, is it? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Just perhaps my looks really don't matter anymore. They don't matter. He's high! Okay, so Quasi's handsome, <laughs> and then we get a random song, which to me felt like this song was leading into the outro of the movie. Psych? No, it did not. Uh, despite this crazy dance number, which they speed up from slow to fast, that one, okay, uh, this song number took place right before Quasi confronted Jean. So it, it doesn't really make sense from a narrative point of view of the sequences of this film. Quasi's ugly, then he's handsome, outro song number, just joking, we're going right back to the steps where Quasi then confronts Jean. What? That doesn't make sense. That's like Sam and Frodo hanging from Mount Doom, and then we cut to the end of Lord of the Rings, and then we cut right back to Mount Doom. It doesn't make sense. I keep saying that in this video. Maybe that should be the title of the new series. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and you want to know what else doesn't make sense? Um, th they get married right afterwards. Quasi and Melody are at the chapel. They've got some crazy dance numbers. Quasi throws down the ultimate dance number. You can't even compare. And that's the movie. Dance off! So I'm just gonna do the same thing I do with my what the hell videos. The five point summary, cause it works and why not? First, the story. This movie has some of the worst pacing I've ever seen. There are moments where it goes a million miles an hour. And then there are other moments where it just slows down and nothing happens. I am convinced that this movie had no story to go with, that it saw the poster for Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame and said, just make some animated stuff and then we'll put it together and make a movie. Whatever, here's $7, get to work. But legit, this story does such a poor job of establishing anything. It's like, oh, we're in France. We are near Notre Dame. Here's an establishing shot of Notre Dame. But I feel like the outside of the church, the cathedral, has nothing to do with the book of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Then they just said, we've got Quasi, we got Notre Dame, that's enough. Just do whatever you want. No Esmeralda, no Frollo. It, not even a hunchback, technically. Quasi in this movie is technically not even a hunchback. Why even call it the Hunchback of Notre Dame? You should call it the quote unquote Hunchback of Notre Dame. But yeah, this movie is empty. Empty when it comes to its story, empty with its characters, empty across the board. I feel nothing when I watch this film, only frustration. There is nothing to establish the characters, their motives, where they begin, where the story takes them and how they grow. Where did Melody get her magic? That could be at least interesting. Oh wait, no, never mind. screw you. We're just gonna go forward and leave you in the dust. Why is Jean-Claude so angry? Why does he want to outlaw all of this stuff? Never mind. screw you. We're not gonna find out. Quasi, once more, and this is the biggest sin of the movie, he's not even a hunchback. So yeah, this movie just doesn't care. It, it never cared. The writers just wanted to get a paycheck. They probably pounded this script out in one hour and said, all right, we're done, let's go. We got 26 other movies to rip off. Let's go already. The side characters, by the way, there are way too many of them. Five bats, I think like five instruments, the sidekick of Jean-Claude. You've got way too many sidekicks. And here's the kicker. They talk more 
than the main characters. We barely see Quasimodo at all in this movie. There's like 30 minutes where I think we see him once for like two seconds and that's it. So this movie doesn't even focus on the characters who are deserving of it. Instead, it's like, ah, let's just buy some time with some mindless prattle from these side characters because we have no idea what we're doing. Hey, Clack. Yeah, Clack. Who's the big bully? Let's jump him. Yeah. Ah. And then worst of all, the conclusion. Quasimodo in the original movie, which again, I acknowledge that the movie came out after this one for Disney, Quasi did not end up with Esmeralda. Forgive me, I don't know how the book actually ended. If I recall, it was pretty dark. But Quasi in the Disney movie never ended up with the girl. They were just friends. But he was accepted back into society. That despite his deformity, he can still be accepted by other human beings and not be seen as a monster. In this movie, he becomes handsome on the spot for no reason whatsoever. So the payoff, not even there. It's, it's like, okay, Quasi, instead of you overcoming your birth defects and becoming who you are through your personality and your hardships, no, instead you just become instantly handsome on the spot because, you know, screw everything else, ugly people, you suck, just leave. Oh, that includes me, doesn't it? Aw. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Next, there's the voice acting. I love that the voice actors legitimately did not care. When I hear them talk and record, it seems that they're like, let's just get paid and leave. Uh, ham it up, who cares? This movie sucks, we all know it. Let's just get this over with. And it's interesting because the voice actors themselves aren't even listed in the credits. I looked on IMDb. They're not listed there. Now, a friend of mine, she looked into it and she said, oh, I think Cam Clark is the voice of Quasi, to which I, I can hear it. It does sound similar, but it's like, don't you dare put my name on this movie. I'll voice for you, but don't you sully my good name by putting my name on your credits. Don't even try. Oh, and also, according to this website, John Hurt was the voice of Jean-Claude? I don't believe that for a second. I do not detect his voice. John Hurt is a masterful voice actor of the ages. Why would he waste his time on this movie? I don't believe that. Not for a moment do I believe that. And if it is true, then that's hilarious. The security of this nation depends on complete and total compliance. You see, dancing is illegal. Singing is illegal. Doing anything against the law is illegal. Then there's the dialogue. Have I not prohibited all forms of recreation and pleasure? Oh, that you have, monsieur. But what of magic, sir? Is it forbidden as well? <laughs> Yeah, um, pretty bad. After that, the editing. This is some of the worst editing I've ever seen for a film. And I don't know who to blame exactly. Was it the writers? The animators? The editors? How can you go from day to night, day to night, day to night in one song number? That doesn't make sense. Who am I supposed to blame here? One of you? All of you? And also the pacing, as I said before, is way too quick and then switches over to being incredibly slow. Once more, I don't know who to blame. Though I do realize that editors have the power to shorten things down and help the pacing of the movie. So in a way, you can ultimately blame the editors. Though at the same time, I feel like they stretch this film out, trying to make it to where it's a certain length which is shameless, and by doing so, they reuse the same shots over and over again. This one dance number with Around the Fire Pit, they do that five times in this movie. No excuse, absolutely no excuse. Well, when it comes to quality, 
if you're trying to be cheap and scummy, well, by all means, continue. Oh, and don't even get me started on the sound effects. It's like they had their own library of already existing sound effects, and they're like, throw it all in. Just all of it. Just go for it. I don't care. He's touching his mustache. Make it go. Why not? We got it. Let's use it. I must stop the gypsy sorceress immediately. <laughs> and finally, we have the animation. So the way I see it, folks, is when I review bad animated movies, I compare it to going down through certain circles of hell. I've been down to like the ninth layer of hell, but I would put this around like the third layer of hell where it's like a layer of hell where like you are constantly stubbing your toe, but the ninth layer is like you're being skinned alive all the time. So yeah, I put it in the third layer. I've seen worse. God knows I've seen worse. That being said, this movie is still awful. I'm still technically in hell, just the third layer. Say goodbye, click. Uh, goodbye, click. <laughs> Repetitive animation, boring colors, boring backgrounds, animation errors out the ass. Look at his head. Look at her arm. Look, this guy's changing colors. Look, they're speeding up the frame rates just so they can make them dance faster. Okay, why not? Sing it out, sing it loud. It's just everything is so boring to look at. It is awful. Once more, I've seen worse. I have seen worse. That being said, this is still an ugly movie and it's not worth spending your time on. Check it out, guys. I have my own original villain, not Gaston. Remember, I told you all, it's not Gaston, not even close. What are you talking about? They don't even look alike. Shut up. They're the same picture. The movement of the characters is jarring. You've got animation that, again, slows down, speeds up. Look at this guy, he just runs right across the screen. Look at the frames on this character. They're barely moving at all. If there was a word that could define this movie, it would be this, inconsistent. Boom, there you go. That's how I would describe this movie, inconsistent and janky and uh, I guess an abomination and ugly and stupid and I hate it and I hate it and I hate it. That's enough, Mia! That's enough! All right, so how would I improve the film? You can't just be making insults and critiquing it without offering something that could help lift it up. So I would give it this. I would say that this movie, call me crazy, th this might be insane. I think it needs a story. <laughs> Being such a smart ass, but legitimately, it needs a story. Give me characters who I care for. Give me reasons of why they are, where they are, who they are, what they want, and where they are going. You don't offer anything really, and you just expect us to pay attention and to care for these empty, flat, boring characters who mean nothing to me. I think a fifth grader could write a better story with more meaningful characters and a story. Uh, here's the thing though, you've got the book. Why wouldn't you use the book? Read it. Use that inspiration if you're going to use the public domain. But no, you use the likeness of Quasi and Notre Dame and that's it. You had your source. You don't even talk about it. God damn, this is stupid. So yeah, I'd say write a consistent story. Use the source material. Do something to make characters that are interesting and worth watching. Outside of that, there's the obvious, better animation. Try not to repeat it too much. I understand there are some times you do, and that can be acceptable, but not when it's five times over. You cross the line right there. And try to explain things that are worth explaining. Magic is one of those things. You can't just present that and expect the audience to just immediately understand, especially when this girl is in a jail cell making <laughs> bricks come to life. Uh, how? 
um, please give me something to work with movie. I would love that. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. So yeah, this was a terrible film. This was a terrible idea. I don't know why I thought Bargain Binge would be a good idea for a series. This was a massive mistake. I should never have done this. Um, I should stop right now. There will never be a Bargain Binge episode two. You cannot force me. We are done. Thanks for watching. And if you want to send me more bad movies, send it to my P.O. box. Just kidding. Don't because we are done. Just kidding. We're not because apparently I hate myself. All right. See you all next time. When it comes to sponsors, I make sure to only promote products and services that are legit, things that are of quality and that I would personally use. And folks, I recommend Raycon earbuds. Believe me, I had my own doubts when it came to wireless earbuds, but Raycon won me over. I use them when I'm walking my dog, doing chores around the house, when I'm doing workouts in my gym. Not like a fancy gym, it's like, a workout bench in my garage. But trust me, it is so worth it. No longer do I have to deal with wires in my arms and in my faces. I can now lift weights freely, and that is so worth it. Also, I appreciate how stylish they look, and they fit well in my ears too. They also come with earbud adjustments to get a fit that is perfect for you. There's also a recharging case that's very potent and can get your Raycon earbuds to full power four times over on a single charge. And best of all, Raycons aren't stupid expensive like other brands. They are actually fairly priced, but still have a high level of sound quality. Recently, I got their latest model, the Everyday E25s. And guys, it's their best version yet. It has six hour playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, a rich bass to the sound, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Also, there are new colors to pick from. So click the link in the description and use buyraycon.com slash Sabrespark to get 15% off your order. Once again, I genuinely mean this. I use these earbuds. I like them a lot. So if you're in the market, I highly recommend them. Go check them out.